Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 21. Verse 17. Verse 17. Verse 17. They say still unto them that despise me. People who don't like God. These prophets will be telling them, the Lord has said, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. You are saved. You are saved. Verse 21. He said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they are. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Hey. But if they have stood in my counsel and have caused my people to hear my words, then they will have torn them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, said the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Said the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth? Said the Lord. I have heard what the prophet said. The prophet said lies in my name. Saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophet that prophet said lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Which thing to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. See? Blessed be the name of the Lord. You can read that and read on what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to all of them that do that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They are everywhere. In Acts chapter 13, there is a man, Elimas, by Jesus, by Jesus means son of Jesus. They must have something to make you think they are children of God. But you saw how Apostle Paul cursed him. Can we read it? Acts chapter 13, verse 6. From verse 6. And when they had gone through the aisles unto uh, Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, Bar Jesus means son of Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired, they desired to hear the word of God. But early mass, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, we stood to them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on Bar Jesus, a false prophet, and said, Oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, we do not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 11. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Verse 12. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. And do you know what? This is my prayer. That people will hear what I am preaching now and stand in their various pulpits or individual, even in this ministry and somebody who is believing me and you stand to pervert what I am saying to justify your evil. What happened to Elimas? My prayer is that it will happen to you so that you will know that what I am speaking is the truth. Even in this ministry, when I feel preaching like this, some people go behind some members and say, don't mind what he say, you know. Don't mind that house, man. Which man go see better woman and but you know go react? The blood of Jesus has taken care of it. So that you would disbelieve truth and follow his evil ways. Church, there is a mad coming showdown. And it will soon come up. So that God will do something to cause the people to hear what we are saying. Among them, very soon, 
God will start to do something among them. In their various settings, wherever they are around the world. And the church will say, You are saying, hey, Pastor Moses, you are condemning, you are calling names. Pastor Moses, you are calling names. Okay. Elimas, no be person name. Simon, no be person name. Judas, no be person name. Demas, no be person name. Alexander, the cost of copper smith, no be person name. Okay, Satan, no call, no be, Lucifer, no be person name. Eh, no be demon name. Serpent, no be name. Okay, so if I call your own, then you go say, why are you calling names? You can't close my mouth. Evil Jesus, Matthew chapter 23, from verse 13. He said, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. But what to you? Matthew 23, verse 13. He says, scribes and Pharisees, they are the religious leaders of that time. What did he call them? Hypocrites. He said, hypocrites. He said, see what you do. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. By the type of teachings they teach them. What to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He said, for you devour widows' houses. Devour widows' houses. Widow there is a symbol of helpless people. You still take advantage of helpless people. And for a pretense, Make longer prayer. Hey. Therefore, you shall receive the greater domination. Verse 15. What do you strive and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you compass sea and land just to make one proselyte, one convert. You can go anywhere to just get one convert. And when you are finally won him, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. That is their ministry. Don't be me, they talk. Oh, now Jesus, they talk. Verse 16. What do you, you blind guides, which say, whosoever, you know, and, and on and on and on and on. Let's go to verse 23. Let me just get the highlights there. It's a long reading. Verse 23. What do you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tight of meat and I understand coming. You, when it comes to prosperity, you follow it diligently. And you have omitted the weightier matters of the law. You omit it. Judgment, mercy, and faith. You won't teach that one. This ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. You see? You blind guys, we strain at a knot and swallow a camel. What to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? He said, for you make clean the outside of the cup of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excesses. And anytime I read this verse 25, my mind goes to some of these holiness preaching churches that make people to say their slogan is heaven at last. When you see them, they are clean. They don't wear earrings. They don't paint their face. They don't wear trousers. You think they are holy until you come close to them. Oh, I love the Bible. It's here everywhere. Oh, this one, when you drop your trousers, drop your earrings, it's more than that. It's more than that, oh. It's more than that. More than that. That is Jesus speaking. Hallelujah. Verse 25. For you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within, inside of you, they are full of extortion and excesses. That blind Pharisee, clean first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So he didn't say you should not clean outside. Though. He said clean inside so that the cleaning outside will be balanced. 
If you clean one part and you don't clean the other, you are not yet clean. Amen. The cleanest bed on the earth is a dove. And William Braha was pointing our attention to something. You don't see it going to the river to bath. But anytime you see a dove, it's very clean. He said, the thing that is making it to be clean, there is a particular oil that emits from inside. It comes out and cleans any dirty that is outside. That's why the dove is a symbol of the Holy Ghost. That comes inside of you and then does something inside that cleans also the outside. The life that you live is determined by the spirit that is in you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Have I finished Matthew 23? One more verse. Verse 27. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto white sepulchres. A grave is called sepulchre. They use marble, painted very well when you look. Oh, beautiful grave. Which indeed appear beautiful outside, but are within, full of what? Dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. See? Anointing for sale is what we're talking about. The grace that has been distorted. Always remember, who are we talking about? Apostle Paul referred to them as ministers of Satan. Every day, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, every opportunity I have, I'd like the people to know that it's not all Christians that are of Christ and it's not every minister that is a minister of Christ. Verse 13 to 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This is the way Apostle Paul put it. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They transform themselves. They transform from Babalao to apostle of Christ. Next verse. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, whose ministers? Whose ministers? Satan's ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Satan has his own ministers. That is what Christ was using to explain to us the parable of the wheat and tares in Matthew 13. It's not God that planted it. He planted the good seed. His apostles and the apostolic doctrines. When men slept, the enemy went also and planted his own. That enemy there is Satan. So Satan has his own ministers. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I preach a minister, uh, uh, the, the sermon I titled the mystery of iniquity. And the mystery of iniquity is how the mystery of how Satan entered mankind. And how Satan entered the church of Jesus Christ. As he took over the world, so also he has also taken over the church. Listen to that message. And if that message does not open your eyes, then you will never understand the need for salvation. Then you will not know why some of us say that some of these churches are churches of death. What is the mystery of iniquity? Hallelujah. We are we read, he said, as is the same apostle Paul. Oh, that man was revelated. That man met with Jesus. You see the key where we first read. 
First Corinthians chapter 11. I'm, it's, 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 sorry, Second Corinthians chapter 11. From verse 2. He said, look at it here. For I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy. Listen, see, see the way he put it. For I have espoused you to one husband. Now go to the Garden of Eden. He said that I may present you also, I mean you as a chest virgin to Christ. Was that not what God did when he espoused Eve to Adam as a chest virgin? The next verse. But I fear lest by enemies as the serpent beguiled Eve through his conny conny. Hallelujah. Now he brought it. So, and I mean, beguile Eve through his subtlety. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now, now then he went on to talk about another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit. Now, catch it. If you catch this thing, you are listening to me for the first time. Then you will know why some of us take the standard we take. There's something we know. Here we are. Before the man, Adam, could meet his wife, Eve. Before Jesus Christ will come, to take his bride away. The church that he purchased with his own blood on the cross on Calvary. While he went to prepare, that's, I don't know what Adam was doing, but our own Adam. That's why Jesus Christ is referred to as the last Adam. Where did Adam get his wife from? From his side. We know the story. Where did Jesus get his wife from? To let you know that what happened in the garden of Eden, physical, he is about to do his spiritual. The second or the last Adam hanging there alone had no wife. He had to be put to sleep on the cross on Calvary. And then something was done to his side. And it produced something. Blood and water came out. That is the new birth that produced you and I, the bride of Jesus Christ. But before he could come to take his bride away, Satan came. One point of interest is Eve. Eve is the one that will incubate the seed for multiplication. When we speak about what happened in the Garden of Eden, blind theologians will be using theological and intellectual reasoning. Instead of going to revelation and pray and receive revelation. It's not apple they ate. It was not apple. No. It was sex between that animal with his conny conny serpent. He beguiled and seduced that woman and had sex with her. Why? An agenda of Satan. It was an agenda of Satan. Where is the interest? God is interested in the woman. Adam, multiply and replenish the earth. Bring forth after your kind. But Abraham need a woman to fulfill that. All animals, they were male and female. So man too must be male and female. You can never reproduce until you have a woman to pass the seed to. So that brought forth Eve. Satan too is interested in that womb. That's why there are three symbolic women in the, in the Bible. Israel is referred to as a she, a woman. The false church, Revelation chapter 17. Israel is Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 17 is the false church, the mother of Harlot. Revelation 19 is the bride of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5, Apostle Paul was explaining and referred to her. 
The same marriage that you are doing with your wife is the same marriage Christ is doing with his bride. That's why the church is called a bride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Christ needs the church to reproduce himself. Satan too, we need that same place to pervert it. So, Eve is a type of the church. And so, the pure seed of the word of God was planted in the womb of the church. Eve, Adam planted his own seed from him. Satan also came in the same womb and planted his own seed. Two children from one woman but different fathers. The same church, one church of Jesus Christ. But with two categories of people in that church, they are called wit and tears. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Is it possible that a man, a woman, we have two children in the womb, but two different fathers? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. So last week, when I was watching CNN, and I saw that court ruling, I was very excited. And the spirit came on Jerry. He printed it as I was entering the church today. He just brought it and gave it to me. I said, ah, Jerry, you will soon be a prophet. Let me read what happened. Listen, you what am I trying to prove? In the church of Jesus Christ, Satan, get you oh, there. God, get you oh, there. In the womb of Eve, we are still saying it, Cain and Abel came from one mama, Eve, mother of all living. But Adam is not the mother of all living. In the church of Jesus Christ, two groups of people are there. Some are planted by Satan. Some are planted by God. The foundation of God standing sure. Having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let them that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. The title. is a, a new Jesse. New Jesse is a state in America. New Jesse George rules Twin girls have different fathers. This was on the 9th of May, 2015. Last week. He said, the story highlights. New Jersey judge rules twin girls have different fathers. And then secondly, judge orders Mark to pay child support for twin he fathered. And I quote, a New Jersey father has been ordered to pay child support for one girl in a set of twins after DNA tests proved he is not the father of both, according to a court document. The mother testified in a paternity case that within a week's time, she had sexual intercourse with two men. The man genetic test confirmed as the father and mother unidentified man and, and another unidentified man the judge acknowledged the unusual circumstances of the case in a ruling this week quote the judge is saying this is a case of first impression in New Jersey and only a handful of reported cases exist nationwide unquote that was my superior court judge Sohel Mohammed that's what he said in his ruling. The mother of two-year-old twins, the mother herself, went to court seeking child support from the father of the child. Neither party is named in the court documents. The Pasek County Board of Social Services filed an application to establish paternity and child support on behalf of the mother. A DNA test established that the man is not the father of one of the twins. According to the ruling. Given that the mother provided the name of only one man. 
Because she believed that that man fathered the twins, ma'am. A paternity test was performed on that man, the document said. The rule is cited in a 1997 article published by DNS expert Dr. Kalas. It said uh, that said one in every 13,000 reported paternity cases involved twins. Uh, involving twins have different fathers. Twins with different fathers are considered a rare phenomenon by the scientific community according to the ruling. Dr. Kenneth Dillman, director of obstetrics of Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, said the process in which two ova are fertilized within the same menstrual cycle by two separate sperm is called superphase sudation. Twins with different fathers are called by paternal or heteropaternal twins, Edelman said. Since one egg has a lifespan of 12 to 48 hours and the sperm is viable for 7 to 10 days, there is about a week's time for potential overlap and the fertilization of two eggs by two sperm from two separate acts of intercourse with different men, according to Edema. Quote, it is more common than we think. Unquote. Edema said, quote again, in many situations, you will never know because there is no reason to do a paternity test on twins. We cannot do a paternity test on twins. But spiritually, there is a paternity twist test by their fruits. Ye shall know who the papa is. By their fruits, we shall know. Because Jesus Christ said, a tree is known by her fruits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He believes the increase in the number of cases of by paternal twins is a result of technological advances and the ability to detect it more easily now. The medical textbook example of by paternal twins involved twins of different races, according to Edelman. There appears to be no central registry that document cases of bipartisan twins, but some in the medical community believe it happens more frequently now than 50 years ago as a result of promiscuity, reproductive technologies, ovulation induction, and other factors, Mohammed said in his ruling. Mohammed ordered the father of that other twin to pay $28 a week in child support for the child, the ruling said. One woman born the same time, the same thing. Two children. Twins. But they have different father. If you don't understand what happened in the Garden of Eden, and you cannot understand the mystery of iniquity, what is happening in the church, and even when Jesus Christ in Matthew 13 broke it down to tell you there are wheat and tears in the same womb with the church, this another scientific evidence, a practical ruling now, should make you understand that not all Christians are of Christ. We shall continue next week. Can we stand up? Hymn 167 O Rugged Cross On the hills Far away Stood an old rugged cross, now the emblem of suffering and shame. Say, the Lord, the old cross, where the barest and death for a world, on a world of love, seen was so hallelujah. Oh, I can't wish that old rugged cross. See my trophy, see my trophy. at last I made up. I will cling, I will cling to the old rugged cross. And 
must change it someday. I must change it someday. For a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross. So the stars by the road. As a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear love of God. Let his glory above to bear it to the glory. Hallelujah. So I cherish the old That's a reward. That's a crown waiting for your stand. Let me hear the brothers now. So watch.
everybody now. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, May the Lord help you. May the Lord help you to live true to this confession in the name of Jesus. May the Lord use these messages we preach from this altar to open your eyes of understanding and see your way through this dark religious world in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord open your eyes and establish you in the present truth. And may you make it to heaven at last. May you remain rapturable. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.